What's up everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. As you guys read in the title of this video, I just wanted to go over the couple of trades that I made this week in the stock market, and some of these are swing trades, and some of these are ones that I've been holding for a couple of weeks, and I pretty much just wanted to update you guys what I've been doing in terms of trading. So for those of you guys that are new to my channel, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with the stock market, mostly swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my philosophies and strategies dealing with the stock market. So if you guys are interested in that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and let's get started with the topic of this video. So the first ETF I'm going to be talking about is USLV, and this is one that I'm actively invested in, and I'm planning on holding this one over the weekend, and I'm pretty much just going to talk about what I did with USLV, why I'm holding it over the weekend, and where I am in in terms of my average share position. So for those of you guys that don't know, USLV is an inverse ETF, its inverse is DS. SLV and these two inverse ETFs they trade based upon slash SI which are the silver futures and pretty much whenever silver futures are going up in price USLV is going up in price as well because it's the bull ETF so what we see here guys right off the bat with the silver futures we see that there's a clear resistance level at about $16.80 with the second resistance level being at about $17.35 and we see a support level here a clear support level at about $16.16 with the second one being at around $16.25 to about $16.30 so why we invested in USLV this week and why I plan on holding it over the weekend is because it seems like like the silver futures have bounced on that support level at about $16.30 and they even went down to about $16.20 and they bounced up there and I think that was aftermarket hours a couple of days ago so it didn't actually affect the price action of USLV because if the silver futures are moving aftermarket hours that isn't going to affect USLV because USLV's price is only fluctuating between you know 9.30 to about 4 p.m. when the stock market's open and the stock market closes right and the silver futures they're open longer than the stock market because the futures market is opened a couple of hours after the stock market closes, right? So why we see value in the USLV for next week is because it did bounce on this particular support level. And now it seems like the silver futures are trading above the EMA line, right? And I'm going to show you guys that a little bit closer right here. So if you look at the 20 day chart, we see, okay, it bottomed off at about $16.19, which was right by that support level that we were talking about before. And since then, guys, it broke above the EMA line, right? And the EMA line, this blue line right here, the line that we see here, the exponential moving average, it's been acting as a support level, meaning that the candlesticks are trading above the EMA line. And whenever they get close to the EMA line, they're bouncing above that and continuing to make higher highs. So that's exactly what the futures have been doing. And that has been correlating over to USLV very, very nicely. So where I'm in in particular in USLV, I took a position at $9.48 about two days ago. And I took another one today at about $9.66. So on average, my shares are about $9.00. And, 60 cents, and I'm in with about $2,500 right now. And to show you guys how much potential for profit USLV does offer from where I'm personally in at $9.60 to the previous resistance levels at about $10.50, I believe. Yeah, see here, first resistance level is at about $10.50. If I can draw that out for you guys, we see that. And from $9.60, you know, up to about $10.50, that is a nice eight to 10% potential for profit with USLV. And USLV, guys, it is again bounced at the support level. It's starting to break above the EMA line, and the EMA line is acting as a support level, which is a very good sign and, and you know a very good indication that USLV is starting to trend up. It's starting to bounce above that support level, and that is a good buying point in my personal opinion, and that is why I'm going to be holding USLV over this weekend. So another one that I just bought into, and I'm holding this one over the weekend as well, is LABU. And this is another inverse ETF, guys. It's inverse is LABD. And these two ETFs, they trade based upon SPS IBI right here. <clears throat> this is a 
This is an S&P Biotechnology Select Industry Index. So this index, guys, pretty much whenever it's going up in price, LEBU is going up in price as well. And what we can see straight off the bat, guys, is that this index has been on an uptrending pattern for the past couple of months. We see all of pretty much all of April, May, and into June, it's been on an actively uptrending pattern, meaning it's creating higher highs. It's riding the EMA line. The EMA line is acting as a support level, right? We're seeing here some nice consolidation, then it shoots back up. Nice consolidation, then it shoots back up. And now it seems like it's going to be in a nice consolidation phase again before it shoots up. So that's why I took a smaller position in LABU because, like I said, when this one's going up in price, LABU is going up in price as well. And with my style of trading, guys, what I look into is pretty much buying into ETFs and stocks that are at a dip buy and that are actively up trending. So this one, guys, it's at a dip buy. It's actively up trending. And that's why it looks very, very, you know, very valuable to me to put my money into this particular ETF over the weekend and into next week. So if we look over to LABU, guys, to see how this correlates over to LABU and to tell you guys where I personally took my first position today in LABU, <clears throat> we see, okay, again, it's, it's trading above the EMA line, it's trading above the 50-day SMA line, as well as the 180-day SMA line. And if we look closer here to the 20-day chart, we see here, guys, it bottomed off at 80 four dollars it shot up started to consolidate a little bit around here right above the 180 day SMA line it shot up again to 116 and then we saw a nice little dip from 116 down to about 104 I believe it hit lows of yeah about 104 dollars so that is a 10% dip. And with that dip, guys, and this stock or ETF rather still actively uptrending, I view this more as a dip buy opportunity. And today, guys, I took a position at $106 average position. I got in right around here, I believe. Then it shot up to about 107. Then we're seeing a nice little pullback again here. And it's looking to hold above that 180 day SMA line. And it's looking like it did. And it's bounced back up. Now it's at 106.75. So pretty much all today this one has been consolidating and that's why you know i open it opened my eyes as a swing trader because this did seem like a good consolidation point where, where it did seem like a good time to take an initial position in labu especially since it's still uptrending and now that i'm in at about 106 dollars and 10 cents up to the previous resistance level like i said before guys it offers about 10 percent you know, 10% potential for profit. And since it is actively uptrending, it could push even beyond $116, maybe even a $120, you know, if it continues to create higher highs. And if it does this, it offers even more potential for profit, closer to about 15%. So this one offers 10 to 15% if it does continue to actively uptrend. And you know, guys, I always recommend to put a smaller amount of money in at first, right? Because you don't want to go all all in right away with with any position you're taking make sure to scale into a position so i took a one thousand dollar position in labu but my usual positions are about four thousand dollars so i usually go in smaller at first and as it does continue to actively uptrend as it does continue to push up that is when i add more money into it and that's just a great way to mitigate your risk and not lose a ton of money so for example if i only have a thousand dollars in labu right now right and you know on monday let's say it goes down to about a hundred dollars i won't lose as much money as I would if I had a three thousand dollars in it. You know what I'm saying, guys? It's all about mitigating your risk and you and you know pretty much just being patient and sticking to your price targets when it comes down to trading in the stock market. So that's the second trade that I made this week. Now let's quickly talk about drip. And I actually took a position in drip at about seven dollars, and I actually ended up cutting my losses in drip. And I want to tell you guys exactly why I cut my losses. So we're gonna see here. We see the channel drip was showing at about $6.30 up to about $7.32. So my philosophy with this trade, okay, it, you know, it bounced at the support level here. And I got in at about $7 average position. This was kind of a bad trade on my part because I thought, you know, I was waiting for that uptrend pattern to confirm. But if we look over time, guys, drip, drip is a downtrending ETF 
over time. So what that pretty much means, guys, it's continuously making lower lows. And you know, stocks like this, I try to stay away from ETFs like this. I try to stay away from, but sometimes guys, I, I even I get sucked in to making bad trades. So I got into drip at about $7, right? I got in at about $7, even though the channel here shows that the, the support being at $6 and 30 cents. Again, bad trade on my part. I got in at $7. The next day, I believe it fell down to about $6.50. And then we saw a nice shot up back to about $6.83. And luckily, that is where I cut my losses. So from $7, I cut my losses at, at, at about $6.83, taking only a $50 loss. And that, that right there, guys, just shows you if you, you know, if you are are kind of like hesitant on holding a position overnight. It's never bad to cut your losses at about two to three to four percent if you do not want to hold a position overnight. That is what I did with drip, right? And today you saw it drop another 10%. So if I didn't cut my losses, I probably would have been down like $250 on this position instead of taking a $50 loss. And let's say you take a $50 loss and you know the next day it shoots up a little bit more and, and you know you would have made profits if you didn't take that loss. Worst case scenario guys, you just hop into the you know you just hop into it again and make profits as it's going back up. It's never a bad thing to just take a loss initially, then maybe waiting into another buy point to get back into the stock or ETF, you know, if it, it you know, if it does show more value. So that is what I did with Drip. I cut my losses, but I still don't really see much value in Drip right now. Because, you know, it broke this channel right here. And overall, like I said before, it is a downtrending ETF. It's it's showing downwards momentum over the past year. So I don't really want to mess with this one unless it shows, unless it's at a very good buy point. So that is what I did with the drip. Ended up taking a $50 loss there. And I actually sold out of Pepsi. If you guys watched my video about two to three weeks ago, I said I was I was taking a position in Pepsi. The video was called Three Stocks That Are Trending Up. I shouted out Pepsi at about $99, I believe. If we look over here, we saw Pepsi. Why I was looking at Pepsi to begin with is because Pepsi took a big dip from about 122 down to about 95. And whenever big companies, in my personal opinion, like Pepsi take dips like this, it's always worth looking at them, looking into taking a position in them. If you do believe in the company long term and if you do believe that the company stock is going to recover and I think Pepsi is a great company long term and we did see that 25% drop from 122 down to about $95 and that opened up my eyes as a swing trader because 25% drop means that you know the stock could recover 25% if the company if the company's direction is in a positive you know positive outlook for the rest of the year for the next coming 3 to 5 years etc so pepsi is a very good company in my opinion so that is why i consider taking a position in pepsi and as we saw it drop to about $95 what we notice here guys is you know it started to trend above the ema line the ema line was acting as a support level i got in with an average position at about $100 and I was pretty much just liking this stock because it was an on an uptrending pattern. It was riding the EMA line. It did break, you know, the 50 day SMA line did break above the 180 day SMA line. And pretty much, guys, I took my profits today because it did hit my price target at around $109 to $110. And I did end up taking 10% on this trade in about two to three weeks of owning Pepsi. So, you know, the RSI level right here is showing that Pepsi is an oversold territory. So I am, you know, expecting maybe a pullback back into the $105 range where I would consider buying into Pepsi again. But right now I think the stock is completely overbought right? It's completely overbought according to the RSI levels. And I decided 9% profit was good for a two to three week swing trade in Pepsi. So I decided to take my profits there. And you know, I'm thinking about getting back into it. If it does pull back and the RSI gets back into a healthy range, maybe at about like 40 or something like that. So that is what I did this week in terms of trading in the stock market. If you guys enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment and subscribe. If you guys want to follow me on Instagram, the link is down below in my description at strive smart is my username i post all my profits there trades i'm taking throughout the 
day, pretty much updates to my channel, my life, personal things, and just random stuff I'm doing throughout the day. So if you guys want to follow me there, I would highly appreciate it. And, and again, guys, make sure to do your own research when it comes down to trading and investing in the stock market. You want to become a self-sufficient trader that's able to pick their own stocks and their own stocks to invest in long term in order to become a self-sufficient investor slash trader. And that's what I'm preaching on this channel. That's what I'm trying to teach all you guys that are watching my channel to do. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys found value in it. Let's make some money today. Peace.